So this is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023, Audi. Uh, I guess I should document this. I already started and thought, well, I should really do that. Uh, what I've got here is a 20 gallon high from Petco, uh, PetSmart. Got it yesterday because I need another tank. I want to start a new breeding project. And I wanted to put just the fish in here that I want. Those are going to be reticulated hillstream loaches. And I've got 10 coming, hopefully tomorrow. I bought them from a, it was off of eBay. They're in Houston or outside of Houston somewhere. So anyway, what I did was uh, I just put like a single layer of this gravel here. Uh, and then I'm going to put a fine gravel on it. And we'll see how that plays out. And the idea is to have something that the eggs can just sort of sift into, keep the babies safe as they hatch. Uh, apparently, hillstream loaches are not uh, fry eaters, but what I understand is they could inadvertently eat the eggs when they're gravel sifting. So that's why I'm putting. Uh, it's kind of a coarser gravel. I was going to originally do sand, and, and uh, I think that's too fine for, for this. They're, uh, they're a stream water fish. They like, uh, uh, supposedly, they like moving water, and yet from a couple of videos I've watched, that's not really an issue. Uh, a good uh, sponge filter should take care of it. And that's what I'm going to put in here. So all I'm going to have is a sponge filter uh, and a light on top and no heater. Uh, it'll stay, it stays about 74 in this room. And that's right in their range. So then I'm going to grab water from another tank. That way the water season, I got a sponge filter. I got a small sponge filter that's been uh, in another tank for, uh, oh God, I don't know, months. So it's well seasoned also. So we'll see. That should work. All right, so here it is. I put a bunch of uh, smooth, rounded pebbles, cobbles. They're small. They're just about, I was wishing I had some larger ones. But looking at this now, um, they look to be a good size. And there's this old root here from uh, um, Carolina Laurel Cherry. It's been, the tree's been gone for a year, year and a half. And I, I was digging out in the yard the other day and dug this up. So it's fresh. It's still got the bark on it. I imagine it'll produce lots of bio slime. That's something the Hillstream loaches will feed on. There's the um, sponge filter. That came out of uh, another tank. That's been running for a very long time. Um, this is a pot of crypt, uh, cryptochorine, uh, wenti eye, and these are the green. There's a lot of bronze that shows in them too, but these are the green. And they're uh, in a terracotta pot with... Uh, um, there's probably aqua soil in there and then uh, uh, gravel and uh, maybe some aquarium sand. And uh, occasionally I'll stick a tab, uh, API root tab in there. And, and they're doing really well. There, I think there were three of the, uh, the little pots, you know, the uh, black plastic uh, aquarium plant pots, ones with the slotted sides. I think I put three of those in here. So there's a lot of plants in there. Eventually, I'll pull it apart and divide it. But that's been sitting in a tank now for, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe a year. And uh, so it's full of beneficial bacteria, as is the, the sponge filter. Uh, the water, this is a 20-gallon, uh, I took uh, five gallons each out of two different 40 breeders that I have in the garage. And I'm sure most of you have seen those. And then I took the rest of it out of my 75 out of the garage. And, um, and that's, so this is all seasoned water. So that hopefully that'll jumpstart this okie dokie. Tomorrow, ideally, the, uh, that's what the, uh, the shipping said, uh, due to arrive tomorrow uh, for 10 of these little Hillstream loaches. And I hope they're all all right. Um, this will be my first time ordering fish online never done that. I've, I've ordered shrimp uh, several times, cherry shrimp, uh, neocaridinus, uh, but I've never ordered fish online. I've heard people say it's not usually a big deal, so we shall see. And these guys have a pretty good reputation, um, and they're out of the Houston, Texas area, so we'll see what comes up. And they, you know, and they had a, 
Uh, I think single price, a three fur and a 10 fur, and I went for the 10 fur. Uh, so I'm gonna drop all 10 of them in here. Um, I watched two different videos, one uh, Keeping Fish Simple and another Lowell's Plant Lab, or Low, was it Lowell's Plant Labs or Lowell's Labs? Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try and remember to put the links in the description on rare, rearing Hillstream loaches. And this setup is kind of similar to what Nick in Keeping Fish Simple used. Um, and Lowell talked about feeding them. And he talked about, you know, making sure they're well uh, prepared, lots of uh, protein on a regular basis, um, blood worms, frozen blood worms. Uh, I've got frozen brine shrimp also. And um, I will also raise my, I think most of you have seen my uh, how to build your own uh, DIY uh, brine shrimp hatchery and uh, and how to raise them. So I'll, I'll throw in a live baby brine shrimp also, and those will sift. And apparently uh, the Hillstream loaches um, scatter their eggs in the gravel and they don't, they'll only eat them inadvertently if they happen to be feeding over that spot and suck up an egg. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. That's why this, this gravel, a little bit finer gravel, ideally, and it's a whole layer of it all the way through, and some of it got washed away, and some of the coarser stuff got exposed when I poured water in here. I got a little careless. Uh, but it should be all right. There's places all over the rocks. They'll uh, start creating, uh, hopefully, a layer of algae, uh, something for the hillstream loaches to feed on. And then once uh, uh, they, they spawn, and eggs hatch, uh, there should be lots of micros, uh, microorganisms in, uh, in the water for them to feed on, uh, coming out of that plant, also coming out of that sponge filter, um, and, uh, and then I'll feed them uh, um, Rapashi Soylent Green, um, and that stuff tends to crumble once it hits the water. And so when the adults are feeding on it, that's another one that Lowell suggested. Once uh, the adults start feeding on it, it crumbles, the babies will be able to pick up little little bitty pieces of that too. I'm not gonna mess with any other live foods like uh, you know, trying to rear. Well, I might try a bucket of green water. I was watching uh, Mexicali Fish Keeper and he had a pretty good recipe for green water and I've not had any luck with that. So maybe I'll give that a try and we'll see if I can get, you know, I, I know uh, in the past I've seen Keeping Fish Simple where he would just, you know, take like a cup of green water and pour it in the tank, uh, you know, every couple of days. And the, the microbes just sort of spread in the water and the fish, you know, particularly the, the, the new fry, they can get to it. So anyway, that's kind of where it's at. So uh, the next step, hopefully, we'll be getting the fish in here tomorrow. We shall see. All right, these are supposedly 10 reticulated hillstream loaches. Uh, all the way from Sugarland, Texas. Um, they just arrived uh, within the last half hour. And let's see what we got. I may have to split the box here because it comes in what looks like a very cool styrofoam inner layer. Yep, we're going to Tell you what, I'm going to gently flip it over and cut the tape on the other side and push it out. Hopefully that'll just slide right up, just like that. All right, now I think this, I don't see any tape, so that should just be able to pop up. That's a tight fit, that is very cool. And there are four bags. of that's one two they look happy and healthy nice really durable feeling bags that's two. Oh, there's a dead one there's three in this bag one is dead uh, maybe two are dead yeah, they're two dead in that bag. So that's bag number three.
And then what do we got here? Oh, also bag. They're, they're not bag number three. It's just three in a bag. Got it. And this one has three in a bag. They all look okay. And then this one. Yeah, and it kind of smells. There's dead here too. There's one alive. There's two in this bag. Uh, one dead, one alive. So out of 10, uh, it looks like three dead. So I'm gonna open the bags uh, and put them in a bucket here. Uh, here we are, this is uh, the first bag of two and both alive. Let's get the other bag without any casualties. We'll put that in there too. All right, well, there are six, two, four, five, I'm sorry, five. This one's got dead fish and really cloudy water. I'm gonna try and open this and just net the live one out. We'll come back for the dead one. It stinks. Yeah, it's pretty foul. I feel sorry for that one live fish. All right, there it is. I don't know what its chances are considering it's been in a bag with dead fish in really polluted water. We'll see. And then the last bag here, same thing. I'm gonna take out the live one. There's the other live one. All right, I'm gonna go get another bucket here and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so let's put this bucket up here. I'm gonna take the one with the live fish down Set it down there, and then I'm going to dump the casualties. This is a two bag, so there's a one casualty in there, and this is a three bag. And there are two casualties in there. Okay, and they are fragrant. All right, I'm gonna take you off the tripod. Don't anybody get your drama mine out. There you go. Here's the, let's start with the positive first. Um, so there should be seven. Three and four is seven. And there, I, I love, these are cute little fish. And then, Three. Okay, so now that we've done the uh, unboxing, really dramatic unboxing, I'm gonna drip acclimate these. I'm just gonna slowly add water from uh, the tank that they're going into. Not like that. And in the meantime, they'll come to tank temperature. They'll uh, Get used to the water slowly and uh, the room temperature as well because the room temperature and tank temperature should be the same because there's no heater in this tank because they shouldn't need it. So I'll let that drip for a while. I'll come back, check on it, hopefully before it overflows and hits the floor. Ah! So they've been drip acclimating for a bit now. The bucket is, well, you can see the water line. I'm going to scoop them out and drop them in. I'll drop them in right here so we can see them, I hope. They lay absolutely flat. Come on, there you go. When I understand, they will climb up the sides of the tank, so a lid is imperative. Uh, this is an aquarium tank. It's got those big lips, the plastic lips, that you're supposed to set a lid on. Um, yeah, I don't know if they can climb up and around that, you know, go up and then around. So I don't want, I'm going to, I've got some of that polycarbonate stuff. I'm going to cut, cut a lid for it. Give it a shot. Come on, kiddo. Ah, you gotta do it. There he goes. They're really pretty. And there's seven. All right, so let's get the bucket out of the way. 
and I'm going to take you off the tripod here. All right, there's one on the glass. There's uh, one kind of going under the rock, one on top of the rock, one against the glass there. Um, I saw one under that branch, but it is elsewhere. There's one going down that rock. They just sort of slide around. They're kind of cool. So I heard people describe them as little mini stingrays. Obviously, they don't have stinger barbs. Um, so I don't know where that comes from. I guess because they kind of look like maybe little stingrays, I suppose. Their pectoral fins fold over their ventral fins. They're kind of taking on the color of the rock already. It's kind of cool. There's another one coming up there. And this one. Now, my understanding, the ones with a rounded, where, where it just sort of rounds from the, the snout, the nose back to the ventral, or the pectoral fins, are likely f uh, females. And the ones that have a more boxy appearance, where the um, pectoral fins come off more at a right angle to the head, are likely males. So we're going to run with that. Hope for the best. And last night, all I had in here was that pot of cribs, and I couldn't go without more plants. I figured it'll help. It can't, couldn't hurt. So I found this piece of uh, driftwood in another tank and put this, I think it's a kind of a bulb. It's, they call it African fern. I got to go find the, the genus. And uh, a wind love java fern and a rather beat up little, uh, just plain, I, I, I guess it's the narrow leaf java fern. And an Anubius, and that one had this black uh, uh, black algae on it. So while it was out of the water, I dosed it directly with uh, um, hydrogen peroxide and let it sit for about 10 minutes. So hopefully that'll just burn that off. So this is the other side of the tank. You can see all the white from the super glue trying to get that uh, um, African fern attached. It was not cooperating. What I what I saw and I didn't even think of it until right now, uh, it might have been uh, MJ Aquascaping. He's uh, I think he's in Holland. Uh, and he talked about crushing up some aqua soil, and while the super glue is still wet, just powder drop the powder all over. That would have worked. Oh well. And then here's that that Nubius that I ran uh, hydrogen peroxide over it while it was sitting out for a little bit. It's kind of a cool. It'll be all right. It'll start. There's new new foliage already coming out, so it should be okay. And I've got the little sponge filter going, and I think that'll be big enough for this tank and the uh, the population. And I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sending a message back to the vendor about the three dead ones, um, and we'll see how that plays out. Um, and I end, might end up with uh, a full ten. That was my intention, so we'll see. So anyway. I'll keep you posted. All right, so all of that was on Thursday, May 9th. Um, and then Friday, we went out of town until Sunday afternoon. And today is Tuesday, May 14th. And when we got back Sunday, uh, what would that be, the 12th, all but one of those Hillstream loaches was dead. So it was not a good batch. I was not thrilled about that at all. I got refunded for three that were DOA, but the rest of them, I guess, are just on me. Um, so I pulled them all out of here, and there's been one in here. You see them on the pot there a lot. So out of 10, there was one survivor. And I don't know if I have high hopes or not, because that pot did come from another tank, and there's algae on it, bio slime. Um, so I, I've seen them on there. It's the, the the blinds are up right here, so maybe it's too bright for him, and he's hiding under this uh, the rocks here. I hope. Um, but as of today, this morning, it was still it was still alive, and so I'm going to do a part two. Um, I that was from a vendor in Texas, so I found another vendor. Uh, in Washington State, and I ordered 10 from them, and they should be here anytime today. Um, and I'm gonna give it another shot. So that was my first, these guys, what's left of it. Ow, just ran into the 
the wall with my rolly chair. Uh, these were my very first experience with uh, um, buying fish online. And well, it wasn't great. I don't know if it's always the case. Uh, you saw me uh, do the drip acclimation and um, everything should have been good, but I think those fish living in, you know, rancid water with other dead fish can't be good. That probably, probably added, you know, took its toll. And then um, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe they just weren't a great batch. So we shall see. Hopefully the, the ones coming uh, later today will be better and I will do an unboxing for them. And ultimately I will do uh, the trip acclimation. They have their own suggestions on how to uh, uh, acclimate fish and I will follow those. Um, and hopefully there's no DOAs and hopefully they will survive because I really do want a tank full of Hill Street loaches. So anyway, this is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. I really appreciate your support. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. It keeps me up there somewhere so people can watch. Uh, and hit the like button too, please. And we will catch you on the next one. Oh, you know what? I forgot to say it. Thanks for watching.